Welcome back, fellow listeners, <laughs> to another episode of Shit That Goes On In Our Heads. We are doing a fun one. It's a catch-up, not like the sauce that you put on fries, <laughs> but it's a catch-up with Crazy 8. Are you ready, G-Rex? I am. I'm ready. I'm so excited that he's back. <laughs> Me too. Everybody, I have to tell you, even today, co-workers of mine, because we're having a little bit of a stressful week, uh, said to me, I need to listen to Crazy Eight's episode again. And they did. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah. And I listened to the episode again on Wednesday also because uh, I had kind of a stressful day. Um, but yeah, that is like my what like my number one all time favorite episode. Oh wow! Well, it's um, um, I don't know what to say. Yeah, I was gonna t- <laughs> um, okay. Um, <laughs> I don't want to get my head too big because then I won't fit through the doorway. But um, no, no, I, I. I that's I don't know I I, I feel honored really Aww. when when, when nice. I hear those things um you know I um uh, I retired you know I think we, I mentioned that last time it's not because uh, anything about you know the field and and uh, you know the work it was just uh, it got to the time where you feel that you know it's I've done pretty much everything that I needed to do and I wanted to leave a legacy. So, um, and it came to that point where I stepped back, you know, and and trust me, if I, if they've been trying to get me back to work, (laughs) um, but, and I've had other job offers as well. Um, which is, you know, something that I appreciate, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's very humbling. Um, but no, uh, you know, yeah, I, I retired. I'm I'm still retired. I'm not planning on going back to work uh, as of today. Um, and I'm and I'm having a good time. I'm so excited. I mm. I, 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 would, I know you were really getting excited about your retirement and like the things that you were going to do with your garden and just things around the house. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm super excited that you got to do that. Yeah. Huh? Well, I'm still in the process, you know, it's, uh, um, it, it's kind of, an, an, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sure you experienced the same thing. It's, it's been an adjustment, um, from, you know, working, you know, you know, 40 hours a week and then suddenly, you know, like you don't have a schedule, uh, you know, you just get to one place or the other, no matter what, whatever time it is. And, um, so it's been an adjustment for me, especially one of the things that I've noticed is that you kind of lose track of the days. <laughs> um, so, yeah, if you have a, an appointment, it's, uh, it's easier to miss it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, totally, I totally understand that. I was talking to Dirty Skittles about a month ago, mm-hmm. you know, because I kept getting up like super early and I'm like, I'm retired. Like retirees are supposed to be able to sleep till like nine, ten o'clock in the morning. Oh, it doesn't. And work that instead, way. I was getting up at like seven o'clock every mm. day. Well, now, you know, and I'm going back to work in um, two weeks on the seventeenth. Yeah. So now, like, I'm sleeping until eleven o'clock in the morning. Like, it's good. And this is exactly what she said. She's like, as soon as you get ready to go back to work, that's when it's going to happen. But um, you know, I I'm excited. The, the four the four months that I had off, or the three this is April May June, most of July the three and a half months that I had off I was I think my body needed it mm-hmm. just to recoup from like all the stress and yes. everything else that was mm-hmm. going on, but it also allowed me to really work on our podcast and get everything done that we needed to get done so that when I do go back to work everything's already set up for us mm-hmm. and. I'm humble beyond belief with just the sheer number of people that are listening to us. I'm, I'm thankful to every single one of our guests, every one of our listeners. It's a very humbling experience. And yeah. I, I'm probably the happiest I've ever been. That's great. That's great. 
Yeah, it's a uh, life is more about that than the other deflections that we get. You know, it's a uh, uh, it's it's you ha- you're going to have a lot of irrationality and you know among our species. Uh, you're going to have, you know, discrepancies and arguments, you know, we're humans. Uh, history has shown us that, you know. Um, but I think if we're kinder to each other, um, the discrepancies would become less violent. Okay. I completely agree with that. that. That is, you know, there's just so much hate going on right now. And I just, I wish everybody would just take a step back and, you know, kind of think before you speak that it would make this world a much better place. Yeah. And, you know, and uh, logic has to play a role, you know, it's, it's okay to disagree or have anger, have hate, but when you personalize it against another individual, that's a whole different story. You know, that, that is something that's more intense. Um, you know, and and uh, and if it's an individual that has influence, you know, it affects other individuals also. So you know, the, it, that's one of the things that I, um, when I was in the field, and a lot of my clients, I, I it was, I always tried to ground them into the reality based on logic and facts. You know, and and that's. You have to base yourself on that because your mind is designed to create. And it creates things that are based on facts and it'll create things that are based on fantasy. Uh, It's when you react on the irrational or the illogic that you get into trouble. Yeah. Some people are better at explaining logic than others. And so when you have you know, what somebody would consider a very logical thought process and you're trying to work with somebody who's not logical or maybe they're thinking out of passion, it's conflict. How do you get past that? Like, it's super frustrating. Well, you know, logic also is based on on fact. You know, uh, you know is, it, is it logical to jump out of a perfectly fine plane? Is it on fire? <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> Is not. there money but, if I know, jump out of the plane? People <laughs> do it. You know, the military does it. You know, but they just don't do it out of risk. There's logic and basics and data and facts that go to behind the system that they have. Uh, and one of the things that I always encountered in the field was that when a person has that passion, mm-hmm it's difficult for them to uh, decipher fact from opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, opinion is just that, you know, burgers are better than taco. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it depends on the individual. Hot dog is a sandwich. Uh, But when I would ask them, you know, give me an example of a fact a percentage of them had difficulty giving me an example. And the basic example I would always give them, I would grab a pen and just drop it on the ground and say, gravity, if I bring everybody in this building in here and I have them do the same thing, I guarantee you we're going to get the same result. The pen will hit the floor. That's a fact. Cannot be disputed. Um, However, some people can't have the opinion that, well, it's not hitting in the same spot. (laughs) Or you didn't lift it high enough. Enough, right? That's what I was thinking. Or maybe you flinged it. (laughs) Yeah. The fact is gravity, not your opinion. That reminds me of a hole that I could dive into about testing that was done in a court case where a guy was throwing a cell phone. It's a long story, but... (laughs) to sidetrack on that i mean the company that g-rex and i used to work for we had a test that they did during new hire orientation which i thought was 
in the moment, I didn't understand why the test was happening, but it later made a lot of sense. And the test was basically designed to tell you a little bit about yourself and how you react under stress and just your natural state of being and, and you know, personality assessment. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was answering the questions as honestly as I possibly could. And when I got the test, when the results came back, I was shocked because I would have guessed after you take the assessment, they tell you what the colors mean and all this stuff. And I for sure was dead set. Oh, I'm going to be this color. And when the test came back, I was equal in all four. And I thought, oh, that's not what I would have expected. And then as you flip through the document, it tells you during stress, you are this color. And that was the color I thought. And that was really eye opening for me because I've I realized in that moment in a normal day, not a stressful day, I do have a hard time making uh, rash decisions or quick decisions because logically I'm taking into account multiple pieces. So I have to put a pause, I have to take a break, and I have to think about it. And that becomes very difficult because depending on who you're working with, if they're a certain color that you're not, even logically, I understand why you want me to do this thing because you operate in this sector. But for me, there's more to it than just that one color. But it also taught me that my natural, what I thought my natural state of being was being stressed and operating out of survival mode. And it was just super eye-opening. And I wish we could take that again after years later to see <laughs> if our results are still the same. And it and it's funny because like when I took the test, I kind of already knew what I was. I, I, I know that I'm highly creative and I, I know that when I get passionate, I get super emotional too. So when I'm stressed out, I get to be that red color because I get super fresh, passionate about something. I'm still a little creative, but I get passionate. I get really emotional, and because I was, I'm, I was so passionate about what I did. A lot of times, it was hard for me to see other people's opinions because I knew I was right, <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I wasn't right. But it was hard to get that across because I couldn't, I couldn't put the brakes on the, the emotion part, the emotional part of it. I've been better with that. I'm telling you, retirement, sabbatical, whatever you want to call it, it's allowed me to do a couple of things. Number one, I practice a lot more self-love and self-care now than I ever did in my yeah. entire career. And I'm doing things that make me happy and don't make other people happy. Mm. And I, I I think that as we as I edge myself back into the workforce, I need to remember that, right? Like we live once. Um, we need to make ourselves happy. I, we're, I, we're not dependent on anybody else to make us happy. Mm -hmm. And we are dependent on making sure that we are taking care of ourselves and that we are loving ourselves. So I, I've i already like started a journal on this and um, I've told like Bizzle and Dirty Skittles, mm -hmm. like I'm writing a whole book on my whole, what happened between October and then coming out on the other side of this. And I've opened up like so many doors in my head. Like um, I still have a little bit of writer's block on one section that I still need to write. It, it may take me a couple of months to get past that, but it made me realize like being an empath and working in customer service, it was, I did myself a huge disservice, right? So I took on everybody else's problems and, issues and I didn't take enough care of myself. So my takeaway from the, from all of that is I'm number one. I need to take care of me. And for anybody that, you know, is in the working world or, you know, working in a customer service job or service job, make sure you're taking care of yourself. Yeah. I used to um do an exercise with my clients um uh with uh tennis balls. And uh Basically, I would have them for every thing that they did. For example, like you were talking about your your personal life, your your job, your you know taking care of this, taking care of that. For each one of those events is one golf ball, you know, one tennis ball, and they had to juggle. You know, you can do okay with one or two, 
now you start putting three, it becomes a little bit difficult. You get four, unless you have practice, you're not going to get it. It's telling you, you're, you're taking on too much. Really, you're taking on too much. And you have to prioritize as well. You know, it's, um, if you're not well, you can't take care of anybody. Dirty Skittles, I want you to come back and listen to this part 15 times a week. Yeah, I mean, you said this the last time I think we chatted Mm -hmm. because it sounds familiar. Well, yeah, it's and there's a difference also, like in in your case, you know, I'm retired. uh, But in my case, again, personal issues when you're working with a team. And I understand kind of the assessment you guys were doing because I've I've had those done. Um, the assessment is just for recognition of what's happening. Mm-hmm. It's not a solution to what's happening. Mm-hmm. So normally, as I, when I worked as a consultant, you know, after this, you know, you would debrief and say, "Hey, you know, this is what's happening." Mm-hmm. Now you got to come up with a solution. That's where the team building exercises come in, you know, because, yeah, everybody has going to have different colors and issues and emotions, but you are working. uh, Basically, you're on a canoe and each one of you have a paddle. Your destination is over there. If you're not all paddling the same way, you're not going to get there. And it has nothing to do with personality. You have to take pride in that goal, you know? And if, if it's my team against another team, we're going to kick their ass, <laughs> you know? We can, we can disagree about the, all the other stuff, but when it comes to the task, we got to get there. But that takes team building. And, and the team building starts with recognition, which is what that assessment does. Now everybody knows... Here's our thing. And everybody needs to be recognized for those things in order to feel respected and to have some type of integrity and then move on. Now we're going to do the team building. Now we're going to get together and put a plan on how we are going to make this happen. And we're all going to agree on it. And there's no going to be, you know, if there needs to be a deviation as we go, we agree we're going to do that. No worries. It's not etched in stone because you never know the problems are going to overcome. You only can do what is logical based on the data that you know. Yeah. Man, that's hitting so hard (laughs) for me right now. It's, yeah. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That's No, no, crazy. Do not be sorry. These are the words. These are the exact words that Dirty Skittles needs to hear right now. So please keep keep doing it. And I'm just absorbing this because I'm going to need this in um, about ten days. <laughs> well, you know, I, you know, if it helps anybody, that's that's great. But yeah, you know, uh, again, I I've, I've been in the field of psychology for over twenty seven years, um, and and I've worked with institutions and organizations. And I've been involved with those kind of organizations and, and you know, and, and many of those organizations, I did my time and left because, again, they were n- not wanting to grasp that concept. And, you know, in my field, we're, you know, business is business, and I understand that. I have nothing against business, but me as a provider, a care provider in mental health, I took care of my clients. I was not looking at so much at the business aspect. I was looking at their health aspect. Uh, And if I was working with an organization that didn't, you know, share my views, you know, I would, you know, complete my contract and move on to the next. Uh, So, but yeah, that's, I understand, you know, those concepts when, when things happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything you're saying is spot on. I mean, it is, I think one of the biggest struggles that I have, and I don't know uh, if anybody else can relate is when you are in a business, 
there is a there is a very it has to be balanced. There mm-hmm. has to be a balance between the needs of the company and the people that are going to get you there. Mm-hmm. And whenever that scale is tipped one way or another, as a leader, it becomes incredibly difficult to keep that level head, right? Mm-hmm. Without saying too much, it, it is. It, it's hard to to find the logic and, and a way to rationalize and a way to make it work. And, and I find myself having to, to tap into the creative side and, and figure out a way that I'm going to be able to succeed because you're right, there is a goal. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the people I work with, we have that same goal in mind. Yep. It's, it's just, I mean, it's really hard. It, it is. It is. I mean, in the military, I mean, there were times that, you know, you, you have to learn to adapt, improvise, and overcome. You know, because you might be in a situation where nobody's coming to rescue you. You have a mission, you have a task to complete. You know, and and you went out there with, you know, the gear and the equipment necessary to accomplish that task. You know, you ran into an obstacle. You can't, you know, call 911, you know, or 1-800-RESCUE-ME because that's Mm -hmm. not going to happen. You know, you have to, at that moment, make your best decision based on the knowledge and the wisdom that you have about the tasks that you have to accomplish. You know, that's, those situations are going to occur. Yeah. So I have a question for both, first for Dirty Skittles and then for Crazy Eight. So Dirty Skittles, I, I, I know that like lately you've been kind of like all over the place. So I wanted to know what you're doing <laughs> lately to put it nicely (laughs) for self-love and self-care because i'm gonna tell you like when you don't practice those two it comes back to bite you in the ass like you know what i think and i'm gonna be a hundred percent vulnerable and honest i think i've forgotten to do that for for a minute and it actually didn't (laughs) dawn on me until you asked me that question right now because i noticed the other day I couldn't focus on something that normally I would jump at and be completely passionate on and like know exactly what I was going to do or whatever direction. And I found myself not having that drive or direction and not really knowing why. But I think it's because I haven't, you know, I share with you a lot of how my day to day goes because we're that close and stuff. And normally it's like when I'm done my work day that time kept extending out to when I was going to be done. And then, you know, personal life comes in and there's something else going on. So there hasn't been me time and I, I need to get back to it. So to answer your question, I haven't been doing shit, bro. <laughs> okay. So just my personal advice to you is find that time. Oh yeah. Make sure, make sure you, you try and do like do something for self-love daily. Right. I don't care if it's like get up and walk around your desk five minutes. Yep, but just get up because it helps you get out of your head. I, I just don't want you to fall into the same pitfalls and crap that I felt fell into, because it happens a lot faster than you think it would. Well, it's easy to lose track of it. It is. It's yeah. super easy to lose sight. So for Crazy Eight, now that you're retired, like, are you making sure that you're doing self love and self care? Oh yeah, yes. It's actually I've it's increased for me because it's something that um, I wanted to do more regularly, but because of my job, you know, I could only you know go to the gym only twice a week. I couldn't do any meditation or breathing exercises because you know I, I was working. You know, by the time I came home, you know, six o'clock at in the evening, um, dealing with idiots, um, you know. <laughs> You get you get you get home and the last thing you want to feel like is uh should, yeah, should I go now? So I I I had to force my when I was working, I was forcing myself going to the gym at five o'clock in the morning. 
you know, they get there and get an exercise and that can only do it twice a week, you know, because then my commitment, you know, at work, uh, occupied the rest of the time. But now that I'm not there, uh, yeah, now I, you know, I go to, I'm going to the gym four times a week. Um, I, I'm bringing my wife with me. Uh, I'm training her, you know, cause she wants to get some nice legs. So we're working on that. <laughs> And, Mrs. Crazy Eight. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. And and I'm a leg guy, so. <laughs> All right. Um, Ew. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so um, get a room. Doing doing that. Um, you know, practicing a lot of the meditation, um, and breathing exercises, which has helped me significantly to lose weight. Uh, um, you know. So yeah, I'm I'm. I'm taking care of myself. Yeah. Cutting the lawn. Believe it or not, the thing that's most therapeutic for me is cleaning bathrooms. Well, I've got a couple. So <laughs> um, have I it. have two. It's, if you want to come up to. Uh, and I think it's just um, from uh, probably PTSD from the military, you know, because oh, there were places that um, we really didn't have bathrooms. We had like a wooden box with a hole kind of thing. Um, so, yeah. And uh, and there are other critters that live there too. Oh. <laughs> other, other the ones that came out of their body. But, oh. <laughs> so um, yeah, I it, to me cleaning bathrooms is 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 weird. My wife loves it because she doesn't have to do it, but to me it's a <laughs> yeah. That's it's to me it's therapeutic. And you know I'm gonna go back because I do want to give myself credit. So. For those that have been listening for a minute, you probably heard Juju B's episode. And she had said something in there towards the end where it was like, envision the person you want to be and figure out what you need to get there. And, and for her, that was to be strong, right? And so after that episode, I, I signed up for um, a, a fitness challenge. It was a 30-day challenge. And if anybody knows me, I hate physical fitness. Like, I, I don't ever get like the vibe where I'm like, Oh, I feel great now. Like it's finally here. It's kicked in or whatever, but towards, and I was dedicated. I had to do it every day. Cause I'm a very extreme person in that aspect. So after the 30 day fitness challenge, my parents and my husband and stuff were noticing, Oh yeah, you're losing weight. And for me, I can't use a scale. If anybody out there is like me, like I just can't because I'm not going to get the reward that I want and then I'll quit. So I haven't been using the scale, but I've noticed my clothes fit looser and like things like that. So I then after the 30 days was up, I started a 42 day challenge. And every almost every week, I would say Juju B and I message each other back and forth. And she checks in on me every once in a while. Hey, how's it going? And like, you know, for Fourth of July, I had a hot dog and a hamburger and I felt really guilty about it. <laughs> mm. And I and I messaged with her and she walked me off the ledge. And so. Yeah, you know, I guess that is a little bit of self-love, but I, I guess I don't necessarily go to that place when you ask that question because I fucking hate working out, man. I hate it with a passion. I fucking hate it. But I'm liking what I'm seeing so far, so. But aren't you gardening and doing oh, other yeah. things too? But that's because I want to eat. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm gardening, but it's, you know, shit I'm going to eat later. Yeah. You know, bringing the weight, the, the the scale thing up is is a good point. You know, it's because it's not about the weight. It's how you want your body to look. Right. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, it, I've seen, you know, uh, bodybuilders, women bodybuilders that, you know. Yeah. And they're, you know, 5'9", and they're at 180, 190, but they're just muscle, f- muscle fiber. I know. It's don't worry about the numbers. The numbers are are, are useless. They become a, a negative reinforcer mm-hmm. because you are already st- suffering from that whole stigma of being overweight and this and this and that and how people are going to view you. Screw the numbers. Do whatever is necessary to get the body to look the way you want it. Yep. Period. You know, if you don't have to go and hit the weights, you know swimming uh yoga you know believe it or not that thing will kick your butt um i did pilates one time and i (laughs) I almost broke a hip you know it's like 
this stuff is tough, <laughs> you know, and you'd see it like it looks like nothing, you know. So, uh, you know, and I, and I consider myself to be in pretty good condition. Uh, but, yeah, it, don't worry about the, the scale. You know, that is useless. You yeah. know, uh, uh, some people just with just restricting your diet from the bad stuff. You know, if you cut the oils and the salts out, just that. You know, it it helps your metabolism a bit, you know, and and it helps your body get rid of some of the bad stuff that's in there. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's funny because now that I've been, you know, not working, I'm not stressing, right? So we were, when we were in Europe, <clears throat> there happened to be a scale in one of the hotel rooms. And um, my wife was like commenting, like how good I look. So I just happened to like weigh myself. I was down to like 162. I can't remember the last time I was 162. I haven't weighed myself since, but I just feel good. Like That's I'm not right. eating a box That's of That's all that pop matters. Pop. Yeah. I'm not eating a box of pop tarts a day. So I'm what if you did? I'm <sighs> not downing a thing as a Twizzlers every day. I'm like, I'm getting out and doing things and walking around the house. And thankfully, you know, the house is pretty big. So I get about three miles a day just walking in the house. <laughs> That sounds uh, like Bizzle. Hmm? Bizzle, uh, since moving to Georgia, has however many flights of stairs. And, you know, that's his workout. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I'm kind of hoping that I can just keep that up, you know, once I start back. Right. Like just eating healthier, being happier. Like it's preparation. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, no stress was amazing. We'll yeah. have to check back I, in with you once you start. See how it's going. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm excited because mm. it's a different type of job. Yeah. It's, I'm not even going to call it a job. I'm going to call it knowledge transfer. That's what it is. Because at this time, at this point in my life, that's kind of what it is. Um, I'm only going to, you know, I don't know how, how much longer I'm going to work. You know, mm. um, I'm loving doing the podcast. This is my, my version of therapy. It's, it's free. I get to talk to my best friend. We talk to Aww. really cool people. Yeah. And, it, and it took off and that amazed me more than anything else in, in the world. Like there's people out there actually listening to us and it, it warms my heart. And somebody I talked to yesterday said that they actually, when they, after they're done listening to us, they walk away feeling better. And so I know that what our mission was is actually happening. I, I get, I get to see the fruition of it. And, um, Nothing makes me happier. Yeah. Improvement, not perfection. Yeah. Yeah, there's no perfection here. No, it's subjective. <laughs> you know, it what's is. perfect for one person doesn't make it perfect for the rest of the world. Yeah. This, this would love us. This one would like, love us to be perfect, but that's not going to happen. But we've gotten much better <laughs> about not calling each other real names. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Improvement. If, if you can do better. To, yeah. If you have a better day today than yesterday, that's improvement. That's it. You know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm able to sit up and take nourishment, you know, because uh, I've had friends that are, that were half my age now and, and they're no longer with me, you know? So they, it's, uh, yeah, uh, th it's important, you know, to take care of yourself, um, and, and make sure that, you know, you have that balance there. You're going to have, we all going to have bad days. Th that's inevitable. You know, it's, it's part of life. You know, we're, we're going to run into some idiot, you know, sooner or later, you know, someone is going to cut you off on a highway. You know, it, it's all of those things are going to happen. Don't take it personal. You know, it's okay to be angry at the moment because trust me, you know, when they cut in front of me in the highway, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you know, some things come out of my mouth that surprises people. Um, but I don't go chasing the guy down the road three miles. Right. This ain't Florida. Just kidding. Um, so, yeah, I don't, you know, there's a difference. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it's okay to be angry about certain things, but don't take it personal. You know, it, it just, it's not worth it. Life is much more beautiful and much more important at that moment, at that place, at that time. So yeah. true. And, you know, I'm like, 
I just look at you and I I listen to you and I'm I'm just I'm so thankful that you've come on for a second time. Oh, thank you for having because, me. Because I feel honored. a lot of <laughs> a lot of what you talk about just really resonates with me because in a couple of weeks I'm gonna turn 60. How the hell that happened, I have no idea. Um <laughs> It's another Surprises adventure. A lot of people. I don't <laughs> want to talk an about adventure. how old I'm going to be. Yeah, it's another adventure. You know, that's a that's how I look at it. You know, uh, and and I always remember, you know, something that my grandfather used to tell me. He said, you know, uh, when you leave, you don't get to take anything with you but your memories. So make sure that you get enough memories with you. So yeah, that's what I what I'm doing now, creating new memories. Yeah, experiences. I feel like, G-Rex, you've said that before, where it's like, I can't take the stuff with me, but I can take the memories and the mm-hmm. experiences. Take the memories, the experience. Like the three weeks we spent in um, Europe, right? That was an experience that I never thought I was going to get to do. I would do it again in a heartbeat. It was those memories, right? Mm-hmm. Life is about making memories. It's right. not about making money. Yes, we need money to live. We need mm-hmm. money to eat. But make those memories because that's the shit that counts mm-hmm. at the end of the day. That's what counts. Yeah, you work to live. You don't live to work. Yeah. Yep. yeah you'll never see a Wells Fargo uh, truck being part of a funeral. <sighs> Put that on a t-shirt <laughs> now stat <laughs> you know i was uh, kind of jokingly but not like I'm, I'm sort of being serious as you guys are talking about this i the first thought that popped into my mind is like is this why like your grandparents will tell you the same story over and over and over again because it was an experience that they had that they want to share and i find myself doing that because i do not really like to post on social media about what i'm doing or what's happening in my life like, I like to be in the moment and sort of just absorb it. But afterwards, I want to tell everybody about it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like besides my words, I don't have anything to show other than this is my very real memory of this awesome thing that happened that nobody's going to believe is real. I'm not on social media. Why? Sorry, hold on. Pause a second. What? What are you doing? Uh, what? Just, Sorry, I thought just, Bizzle... The producer's he, making he, signals. He, right, off. wasn't he? He was like giving he, this weird look. Like I'm like, what? What is? What am I missing? He, oh, he he put a note out in the chat. I knew you did something. <laughs> what did he say? He says this episode brought to you by Wells Fargo. The best way to bank in the in this life and the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Free, that was free advertisement, by the way. <laughs> no, we can't do that. Will Fargo, you can't. We can't do that. He's like, yeah. have Crazy 8 say it so we can use it as a fake promo. No, dude, you can't do that. <laughs> hey, if you want to cut that part, we can edit it and I'll say it's an armored car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Uh, uh, those are the funny. These are the funny moments of life that you always got to have. I know. That's right. And I, I'm telling you, you look amazing. Oh, thank you. I mean, thank you. You looked amazing the first time, but you just Ooh. looked so much more relaxed and yeah. chill and but Speaking, just happy. Yeah. It's, you know, you, uh, again, being the psychologist, you know, you can't get the stuff once you learn it and you can't put the genie back in the bottle. But, you know, I, I keep finding myself, you know, reminding myself what, what stage of life I am in. You know, where am I there and what are the things that are supposed to happen? And I'm like, why do I keep doing that? Why do I keep doing that? (laughs) Uh, You know, and the other day, I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to make the commitment. I'm not going to think about this stuff anymore. Oh. Uh, And um, yeah, so it it still pops up, but it's like I was getting obsessed with it, you know, to a point that like it was it was affecting my emotion. It was like, Mm. oh, why? You know. I'm healthy. I'm not going to die. You know, I'm not doing anything risky. Uh, you know, I'm, I was going through that whole stage because again, the logic and the, in you know, the information that's in my head, uh, and finding myself, you know, now with freedom of time, I was able to 
get focused on this thing and say, oh, you know, maybe I need to do all these things. Like, no, I'm not going to go skydiving. That's crazy. <laughs> Why do I need to go skydiving at this time? You know, it was like, well, then maybe diving. And I'm like, no, I'm not going diving. Uh, my crazy nephew, we were going to go to Vietnam there for a second. I'm like, wait, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I got to put brakes on this stuff here. You know, I, it's, uh, you know, I, I think I got a lot more time. You know, my grandfather died at 103. So uh, wow. yeah, I got good genes. We do. 30 <laughs> Skittles, that means you're going to live forever. That's fine. I'm fine with that. I still look like I'm 21, yep. right? <laughs> Um, well, speaking of looks, wait, can we just seg? can we just segue into like a really funny, well, I think it's funny what happened today. Okay. So the, I mentioned that I had a coworker who said, man, you know, we've had a rough week. I need to go back and listen to crazy eights episode. And so I told him, yeah, you know, I was talking to my dad this morning and he made the mistake of asking me how everything was going. And so I made a joke. I was like, I had like a 45 minute event sesh with crazy eight and, uh, somehow we got into it and he, I said, you know, have you seen what he looks like? Cause we're friends on social media, this, this person and I, and he's like, no. And I'm like, well, what do you think he looks like based on the episode that you've listened to? And this is what he had to say. I envision him to be North of six feet tall, physically fit, but not too bulky salt and pepper hair. Got to have glasses and a firm, but unassuming kind of older Robert Langdon vibe before Tom Hanks. I was like, uh, no, not quite. But I thought that was funny because based on what he's heard of you, that's where his mind went was like, mm-hmm. it's got to be this person over six feet tall and like all this stuff. And so I shared a picture and he was like, oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you shared a picture of me? Oh, yeah. Cool, cool. So I just thought that was funny. Sorry. Yeah. I, had to throw I, that in I think he should sign it. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got to get autographs. Yeah. 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 I, I, I just really appreciate you. <laughs> you're just so candid and like, you're always willing to like, you know, talk us through like mm-hmm. just some stuff that, that happens to be going on. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, where I am six months from now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's what I think we should all be doing the same. You know, um, me and my wife the other day were talking about, you know, when we were, when we were youngsters, you know, uh, mm. You know, he's got some the, sketchy the, stories, y'all. The, 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 you know, neighborhoods were different. You know, you, you knew your neighbor, uh, your neighbor watched out for you. You watched out for the neighbor. You know, everybody down the street knew each other, you know, and it seems like we've gotten so far away from that, that now it's like they don't even want to look at the neighbor's house. You know, it, it's a... Yeah, it's it's kind of strange, and it's one of those things that we need to take care of each other. You know, yeah. uh, don't forget, you know, to contact your family, and you know, let them know you're still alive. You know, uh, you know, it's don't just call when things are bad or when you know you're in an emergency. You know, let them know that you're still there, uh, and, and it's you know, it, it's rewarding. It's it's your part. And on this planet. Oh, speaking of taking care of each other, I feel like now is a perfect time to share with everybody my favorite. Um, what do you call this? Something that somebody said. <laughs> my, yeah, one of my favorite quotes. <laughs> the something that cut, somebody said. Cut that part out. Let me do that again. Okay. Speaking of take. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. He's keeping it in. Producers like, no, it's staying. But no, seriously. As you guys were talking, I was trying to remember things that make me feel good, like especially in a time where it's crazy. I'm overwhelmed and like I am not doing the self-love that I need to be doing and I'm just burnt out. And I remembered and I've remembered this quote since I was little. So that's how much of an impact it has on me. And I heard it on Oprah and it is by uh, somebody called his name is Patrick Overton. And it says. When you come to the edge of all the light you know and are about to step off into the darkness of the unknown, faith is knowing one of two things will happen. One, there will be something solid for you to stand on. Or two, you will be taught how to fly.
it's okay to be not okay. Just make sure you're talking to someone.